The history of prosthetics dates back thousands of years ago. But it really wasn't until 1858 that artificial limbs were improved to look and feel more natural. Douglas Bly, a physician from New York, used his knowledge of anatomy to inspire his new design of a prosthetic leg to move and function naturally. Not after his invention, the Civil War broke out, and with the increasing number of disabled soldiers, our government quickly grew interest in Bly's advanced prosthetic limbs. Oddly enough, 160 years later, we're still faced with the same challenges. To improve natural movements and improve capabilities of prosthetics to help support our disabled veterans. Back in 2015, I served in Operation Enduring Freedom with the United States Navy as a trauma surgeon, and I have personally cared for those wounded warriors who have returned home from Iraq and, Af from Iraq and Afghanistan. <clears throat> Would you believe that over 80% of our wounded warriors returning home have suffered the loss of an extremity? 80%. This is mostly due to the protective body armor that we're issuing, but also the weapon of choice of our enemy, the IED. And when you talk to our wounded warriors, you cannot ask for a more motivated group of individuals. All they want to do is to get their lives back in order, contribute to society, and many times, return to active duty. And because of specialty centers like Walter Reed, our return to duty rate after extremity loss has dramatically improved from previous conflicts. But there is a concerning pattern. The overwhelming majority of those who are able to return to duty have lost a leg. And because of the lack of advanced prosthetics for the arm, those who have lost an arm are unfit for duty. The loss of an arm often means the end of their careers and significant impact on their daily lives. This huge technology gap between lower and upper prosthetics motivated our Department of Defense to challenge the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab to come up with an engineering solution. You guys, today I am thrilled to introduce an idea that would change the world of prosthetics and beyond, delivering new hope and possibility to all. The modular prosthetic limb. For simplicity's sake, I'll refer to this as the MPL. Well, first, its modular design can replace limb loss at every amputation level, from the hand, below elbow, above elbow, even at the shoulder. It has 26 articulating joints and is able to move each individual finger independently. Anything the human arm can do, this limb can emulate. Not only is it motor capable, but it's sensory capable as well. 200 sensors feed back information of temperature, pressure, position, velocity, even acceleration. It's more than just a prosthetic device, but truly an engineering solution to replace the human arm. Now, sinking the MPL to the human body can be <laughs> quite the undertaking. So in order to control the arm, we perform a procedure, surgical procedure, called targeted muscle re which rewires the nerves that carry information of the missing limb to residual existing muscles. Now when the patient thinks of moving their missing limb, these signals are rerouted to these muscles acting as a biological amplifier. You can kind of think of me as a surgical electrician. <laughs> <laughs> By using advanced algorithms like pattern recognition through virtual training, we reinforce those neural connections of the brain down to these rewired muscles. And we can translate muscle contractions into intended movements to the prosthetic device. We simultaneously record the muscle activity from multiple channels Within each channel, we identify key features, potentially giving us thousands of combinations we can map to. You can think of it as a signature symphony of muscle activity that is specific to a movement that is controlled intuitively. The patient simply thinks of moving and the prosthetic moves. We've even been able to map individual 
finger movements. Believe it or not, the technology is out there through the stimulation of sensory nerves that we can feed back information to the patient to feel pinpoint places of the entire hand, detect surface texture, distinguish between hard and soft objects, and hopefully someday, even proprioception, the sense of the relative position of one's own body parts. Well now, how do we communicate with the MPL? Using two myobands around the patient's upper arm, we record the electrical signals of the muscles. And then this is sent wirelessly to the MPL. Intuitive, moment, intuitive motions can actually be programmed using your cell phone in just minutes. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> This app allows for the addition of any desired movement. We can make adjustments of the limbs, such as impedance, speed, special modes for particular activities. You get status updates, such as the battery life, the streaming of data, even the temperature of the components of the each device part. Giving the user complete freedom of control for any situation. While it's one thing to talk about the MPL, it's another wild experience to actually see it on a patient. This is Mr. Johnny Matheny. He is my first targeted muscle re patient. Johnny is a man of many firsts. He is the first person to be able to take the MPL home for a longitudinal study, but he's also the first individual to have an osseointegration implant of the upper extremity performed in the United States. Before surgery, Johnny had a traditional socket that was limiting and constricting strapped to his body. Now, he has an intramedullary implant into his humerus that extends out of his body and acts as a direct skeletal attachment for the MPL. <laughs> now, the MPL attaches, it's more comfortable, it's easy to use, and it also gives him complete free range of motion. It's even more phenomenal to see this in person. <laughs> in fact, would you like to see it in person? <laughs> it is with great pleasure I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Johnny Matheny. My journey began in 2005. That's when I got cancer. They did six surgeries trying to cut it out. 39 radiation treatments trying to burn it out. But my cancer doctor told me they have tried everything in their power. So they are going to amputate. But I've always believed in PMA, positive mental attitude. And I have dedicated my life to advancing prosthetics. And I have volunteered to do both the TMR surgery and osteointegration. Now, 13 years later, they tell me I'm the most technically advanced man <laughs> in the robotic field today. So move on over, Arnold. I'm the new Terminator. <laughs> I can cook dinner. I can trim the hedges. I am even started to take piano lessons. <laughs> My next goal is to learn to play Amazing Grace on the piano. Hey, Luis, come on out and help us with the demo. A little fist bump. Boom. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. As you can see, Johnny is moving completely naturally, but what's really amazing is his ability to do this. 
Is it like six, seven pounds? Just about that. It's designed for the 50th percentile male. Amazing. <laughs> wow. How much investment for this extraordinary innovation, how much does this cost? Luis, believe it or not, it's been over $120 million of R&D to this day. Wow, that's amazing. So, all right, all right Johnny, Thank you so we? much. Yeah. Take guys, us Mr. home, Johnny Albert. Thank you. This is only the beginning. Over the next few years, Johnny is hoping to have a sensory cuff electrode surgically implanted, giving him the full range of sensations, much like he had before his amputation. But beyond Johnny, my personal aspiration, in fact, my career goal, is affordability and accessibility. I'll say it again. <laughs> affordability and accessibility of the MPL for anyone in need for one hundredth of the cost. If Douglas Bly could only see us now, 160 years later, our advancement in function and ease of use, where anyone missing an upper extremity at any level can learn to play Amazing Grace on the piano with ease. You guys, be excited. <laughs> <laughs> We are at a crossroads of breakthrough surgery and breakthrough technology. We are witnessing the evolution of man and machine. 